We've been in a collection of talks this April. April's the best month because I was born in April. Yeah, come on, Diamond Burstone. Come on, somebody. April, let's go. Right? I turned 36, though, so that's been a little rough. I know I'm officially in my late 30s now. Uh, but, you know, it's one step at a time. You know, trying to take those new health steps, all that good stuff. Um, but what I love is that God continues to speak great things over our church. And I believe the, the kickoff of this series last week was a testament to that. And we're in week two of a collection of talks called Stories Jesus Told. Now, as I said last week, I love a good story, whether it's a movie or a show I, or listening to someone. I love a good story because stories carry weight. Stories carry significance. And Jesus was the greatest storyteller that ever lived. And he loved to teach in stories. I don't know about you, but I was not the best note taker in school. I was not the best studier. But I really could grab a hold of stories because I know they related to me. And one of the things that we observed last week is that the reason Jesus taught in parables is because he wants us to understand that he understands what we're going through. We say this a lot at Local City, but life is hard. Can I get an amen? Right? Life is difficult. People are difficult. Can I get a two-handed amen? Come on, somebody. People. People, people. Right? Life is hard. People are difficult. But Jesus understands that. Jesus had some people around him who were very difficult. He went through some very difficult seasons in his life, and he can relate to what you're going through. Maybe you're going through a difficult season in your relationships. Jesus has been there. Maybe you're going through heartache, and, and your heart is broken from something that just happened. Jesus has been there. And one of the things that I love the stories of Jesus tell us is that it's not about Jesus saying, hey, do better, feel better, and then you can experience me. It's saying, hey, no matter how you're feeling, I just want to have a moment with you. I want to sit here and be with you. I want to let you know that I care for you. And these stories help encourage us that, help remind us who Jesus is. So today the title of the message is Built on Truth, Built on Truth. Now let me just get this out of the way. We are not a big believer of the phrase, my truth here at Local City, because truth is not wavering. Truth does not change from me to you. There is the truth. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So what we're talking about today is how do we build our life on the truth? See, yes, Jesus taught in stories, but they were to prove truths about the love of God, the authority of God, the message of God, and what he's created our life for. I pretty much barreled down the description of a parable as much as I could because that's what the stories Jesus taught in. They were called parables. It's this. Write this down again. A simple story to show a significant truth. A simple story to show a significant truth. So Jesus would tell these simple parables that people could understand and attach themselves to so that they could have a handle on the significant truths that can change their life. Truth changes your life. And I love that there is the truth because if there was a wavering truth, man, how could I trust it? Right? Like how could you trust something that isn't firm, that isn't solid? How can you trust something that is always changing? See, the truth is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the word of God is the measurement and authority over our life. And I'm going to talk about why that's true. But here's what Jesus says. He reminds us this in Luke chapter 8. It says, his disciples asked him what this parable meant. Now, I like this phrase. Because you ever, like, heard something and be like, hold on a second. What do you mean by that? What would you just say? Last week, I unpacked a little bit my difficulties in college and how I had to always ask my teachers what they meant by this thing. It's okay to ask God and ask Jesus, hey, what do you mean by that? Can you explain it a little more? Can you go like the extra 10% and give me the full 100 so I can fully understand? Well, Jesus replied after that disciples asked that question. He said, you're permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. I love that phrase. What is this phrase saying? He's telling his disciples and us today, hey, you're invited to understand these incredible things about the kingdom of God that you can be a part of. Turn to the person next to you and say, hey, you can know the secret. You know, let them know. Just whisper it to them. Hey, you can know the secret. That's a little weird, but that's okay. We're talking about the secrets of the kingdom of God. We're getting communal together, right? Community here, connecting with those around us. Well, what does Jesus say? But I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. I love what he's saying. Hey, I use parables so also the outsiders can understand as well. Because I am trying to welcome everyone into the family of God. I'm trying to help everyone understand they have access to the truth. 
Because one of the popular beliefs during this time was there was one group of people who could know the truth and another group of people who were excluded from the truth. And you may feel that way today. You may feel like, well, I'm not a churchgoer, so I can't know the truth you're talking about. That isn't the case. It may be your first time in church. You may be going through something difficult. You may have a lot of doubts and anger at God right now. But I want to encourage you, you can know the truth this morning. Because what, what does it say in Scripture? It says that you can know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That verse is really important because I need you to understand today, Jesus doesn't say you will know the truth and the truth will hold you down and burden you and restrict you to this life of religious tradition and behavior and obedience. No, it's that you're going to know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you're thankful for the truth that sets you free today, come on, let me hear you that you're out there this morning. Jesus, write this down, Jesus taught the truth so that we could have a rock to stand on in a world of quicksand. I'm going to just let that marinate for you. Soak, simmer a little bit, right? I'm a big microwave guy, so I'm not a big on the grill, like let it simmer guy. I'm like, I'm hungry now. But maybe we could let that simmer for a little bit, and I'll help you realize that Jesus taught the truth so that you could have a rock to stand on in a world of quicksand. Quicksand is not a place you want to be. It, you get stuck, you sink, and you die. It's shaky. It seems, it seems firm, but when you step on it, it destroys you, Right? And Jesus has given us a rock to stand and build our life on. And we have to realize that there is truth that we surrender our life to. This is important. Stay with me. That there is truth from God that we surrender our life to, not truth that we change the truth to adapt to our life. It's not one of those things where, okay, I'm going to change the truth because it's easier for me to accept it this way. No, 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 no. I have to accept the truth first and foremost. I'm a big coffee guy. So is my wife. Need the coffee in the morning, right? I'm a big black coffee guy, right? I don't put anything else in it, right? I'm actually not allowed to get coffee for events anymore here at the church because I'd go to Starbucks and pick it up and bring it to the event, and they'd be like, hey, where's the cream and sugar? Uh, I don't use any of that, so I just grab the cups and the black coffee, right? Now, maybe you're a cream and sugar person. That's okay. But imagine if I were to bring you a cup of coffee And it looked great. It was going to wake you up. But then I poured a whole bunch of water in it, and then I handed it to you. You'd be like, hey, man, you just messed it up. Why? Because it's not as strong anymore. I always used to mess with my youth group kids. I was a youth pastor for a long time. And they would say, oh, I love coffee. I'm like, do you? (laughs) Like, do you really? Because I see you go to the free coffee on Sunday mornings, and you put, like, a little bit of coffee in there, and then you just pour the whole thing a half and half in there and put, like, five sugars. You like, like, sweet milk. That's what you like, Right? And so what I'm trying to help you understand is that you may say, we may say we like the truth, but unless we're willing to swallow the whole truth and nothing but the truth and not change it or adapt it or manipulate it so it's more comfortable for us, it's never going to truly set us free. You with me? You follow me? Here's what it says in Proverbs 16, 20, the book of wisdom. It says, those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. What this tells me, and this reminds me, in the book of wisdom, is that God is trying to instruct me to do things. It tells me that I need to trust God because it leads to joy that I can never achieve on my own. I just got to be honest with you. Sometimes, a lot of times, I am my own worst enemy. And sometimes getting everything that I want is the worst thing that could happen to me. I've heard that Some of the darkest depression that you can experience is when you work so hard to get something and you finally attain it and then you feel the exact same way now that you have it. You want that thing and you try so hard and you burn so many bridges and relationships and you run from God and finally get that thing and you realize I'm still just as empty and I'm holding everything that I want. Well, today what we're going to talk about is this parable about how Jesus tells us what the wise person does. Now, this parable maybe has been packaged in a wrong way, and it's the parable of the wise man who built his house on the rock. Here's what it says in Matthew chapter 7, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, if you would underline that for me or highlight it on your digital notes or card notes, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waves rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. 
like a person who builds his house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real, this is really important, local city, he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. So Jesus was teaching from a point of, hey, I just got to let you know this is true. And I don't have to explain it in some long dissertation. I can give you this little story, this little parable, and help you grab a hold of it. Now, I believe where this parable has been messed up is we package it in like, well, if we believe in Jesus, we're building our house on the rock. But that's not what it says. It says those who believe in Jesus and believe Jesus and follow their life in response to that. Because I can believe in Jesus but not believe him. I believe a lot of, there are a lot of people in our culture and maybe even in the church today that believe in Jesus but don't believe him. What do I mean by that? I can believe that you're a real person, but I can believe the story you're telling me is a lie. Is a lie. So a lot of times we can believe that Jesus was real and that he's the son of God, but when he says some truth in our life that we need to surrender to, we don't believe him anymore. My hope for you today is that you would surrender your life to the authority that these people saw. That's the authority of Jesus the authority of the love of Jesus and hope of Jesus and joy of Jesus in your life. Because what again, what does it say? Anyone who believes in me and hears the teaching but does not obey it, their house is gonna fall. I don't want your house to fall. Jesus doesn't want your house to fall. Our youngest son, whose name is Teddy, he's uh, 19, 20 months now, I don't know, it all flies by. Um, But he loves to build towers with his blocks right now. And one of the things I would love to teach him, but he's, you know, one and a half, he can't fully grasp this, is when he stacks up his blocks, he always puts one block at the bottom and then just keeps stacking this way. And in my mind, I'm like, you know, son, you really need to build a firm foundation. You need to really surround this uh, with some stabilizing pieces. You need to make sure you're not building it on the carpet, but on the hardwood, right, so that it's more firm as it goes up. But he doesn't understand that. So he just keeps building and building and building, and eventually it falls down. And then he goes off to do something else, right? And then when I try it, then I'll like try and build it, and he'll run over and yeah, knock it over every time. I'm like, come on, man. I really worked really hard on that. He doesn't care. <laughs> but the thing I want to tell you is, is that he doesn't understand that the higher he builds, he's actually destroying his building before it falls down because he hasn't spent time on the foundation. It's built on sand. It's built on uneasy foundation. Here's a truth for all of us today. I want to give you some lessons from the parable this morning. Is that we are each building a life. Every decision you make, every word you say, every action you take, every relationship you step into, every job you pursue, every goal you write down, we are each building a life. You just can't escape that. And one of the things I was joking about my age, right? I've realized I'm building my life. I'm building my marriage with Adrian. I'm building these two boys. I'm honored to help build this church. So I need to make, take a little bit more inventory and ownership of what I'm building. Because I'm the one who's building it. I mean, you've got to understand that. You may say, well, people have said things about me or attacked me. I know, but you're still building life. You're still building what's going on. You're making the decisions. You're choosing how those things are going to affect you. You're choosing the foundation you're building your life on. So once we can get an understanding of that, we realize how important our life is. Do you know why your life's important? Not because anything that we achieve or relationships that we have or anything like that. Your life is important because Jesus said so. He says that there is no greater love in the entire universe that exists that's greater than a love that someone who would lay down their life for their friends. Your life is so valuable that Jesus laid his life down for you, and he says, who is the creator of all things, there is no greater love than that. That's how valuable you are. That's how valuable what you're building is. And see, my life didn't start with me. It started with the breath of God that blew into my life, and I'm only here because of him. See, life is not about finding God. It's actually about returning to him. And it's about really realizing that bedrock has always been there. Why is the bedrock important before you start building? Because until you have that, you'll build, 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 break down. Build, 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 build. Your son will come over and knock it down, right? (laughs) And it'll be down. But until you build on the bedrock, you have to realize that it's just going to keep doing the same thing. You know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. That's why we talk about church and 
surrendering to Jesus. This is more than just a check on the calendar. I need this. You need this. We need each other. I need to be reminded of the parable of the wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rock is not just Jesus. It's the teachings of Jesus. And see, I need, you need to have that bedrock in your faith. Why? Because even when you build on that bedrock, life has a way of knocking you down sometimes. I was just talking to someone from our church about this, that we all need to have that bedrock moment in our faith where we say to ourselves, I'm never going back. There's a story, uh, there's a miracle that Jesus performs where he feeds the 5,000. Maybe you've heard about it. The disciples who are following him are super pumped because Jesus just fed five, 10,000 people, and they're like, yo, we roll with Jesus, so we are guilty by association with the popularity crew here, so we're pretty awesome. And then you... Jesus takes a couple beats and then looks at this giant crowd that is following him and says, hey, until you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you cannot have any part of the eternal life that I'm trying to offer you. And if I were the disciples, I'd be like, Jesus, say what, man? We just got all these people around us and now you're talking about this zombie stuff? Like, what are you doing? And it says that a bunch of his followers, a bunch of people who just ate with him left because they did not want to hear the hard truth. Now, for you, that sounds more, but what he's talking about is he's referencing back to the truth of who God was planning the whole time with the Messiah and the coming Son of God. He was letting them know that I am the ultimate sacrifice, a lot of layered stuff, but they didn't want to hear it, and they left. And Jesus turns to his disciples, and we can give Peter, a, one of the disciples, Peter, a hard time all the time for some of the things he said, but here's one of the great things he said. Jesus turns to the disciples, and he says, are you going to leave too? And if you know the story... Peter looks at Jesus and kind of every, the disciples says, hey, Jesus, where else are we going to go? You're the one that is teaching with this authority. You're the one that is teaching us this truth, and we've never experienced anything like this. So this may be a little hard for us to hear, but where else are we going to go? You need to come to that statement with Jesus and that bedrock moment of faith that I can't go back after what I've seen and experienced. Maybe you've never seen and experienced anything. Go all in with Jesus, and I promise you, you will. We say it this way. Give Jesus the year challenge. Give your life to him. Get baptized. Make church a priority. Start serving. Get in a small group and see what God does. Because you're not just building your life on Jesus. You're building life on his teachings that says, hey, gather with my people. Surrender your life to me, and I will bring you shouts of joy. I will bring you hope that has a name. I will bring you a bedrock of faith that no storm can tear down. Come on, if you're thankful for that, come on, let's show Jesus we're thankful for that this morning. That's what you're invited to. The bedrock moment. You know why else I need a bedrock moment? It's because life is hard. And I've been knocked down numerous times. And some of you guys know my testimony of losing my father suddenly and praying for him and bringing, believing for a miracle and holding his hand as he slowly passed away, right? Some of you know that story. The difficult things of surgeries that Shepard, our oldest, had when he was only a month old and just feeling so lost and afraid in that ER room. I'm so glad in those moments... I, had, I hadn't built my life on my truth because my truth was, yo, I'm scared, I hate this, and this is, this is awful, and I want to give up. But God's truth was, I'm with you, trust me, and I'll help you get through this. And I'm praying for your son, I'm praying for you in this moment of loss way more than you think, maybe even way more than you can feel. And I'm so glad I surrendered my life to the bedrock truth of Jesus and his instruction so that I could have those moments. We need those moments because here's the thing. Number two, the real foundation of our life is only proven in the storm. What's the parable say? They both build a pretty great house. But as those of us in Florida know, why our house insurance keeps going up, because we know storm hurricanes are coming and we're near the beach. And that means the cost is greater. And so when those things come, they look nice, but if they're not built on a healthy foundation, one will stand and one will fall. And that will only be proven when the storm comes. So some of us look at others' lives and we're like, look at all the things they have. And I'm, my response would be, that's awesome. What happens to their life if they lose it? This is a hard truth for us to swallow. But my thing that I always wrestle with people as they're growing in their faith, I'm, I tell them, hey, what Jesus is inviting us to understand in this parable is, are you ready for that storm phone call? Is your life ready for that storm news? of that passing of a family member or a friend 
or that, dif- or that job loss or that difficult, are we ready for that? Because we know life is hard, right? And I'm not, this doom, I'm not a doom and gloom pastor by any means, but I do want to prepare you to understand that that will come. Maybe you've had one or numerous in your life. If you haven't had any, I promise you they're coming. Hopefully a long time from now, hopefully honestly never. But there will be a day where, you're, where that phone call or that news comes to your life, and your foundation will only be proven in that moment. So that's why I realized, man, if I lost everything, I still have Jesus. And I, that means I can keep going. Now listen, he has blessed me with a beautiful, incredible wife. He has blessed me with amazing kids. He has blessed me with a church, amazing friends that I love, that I'm thankful for every day. But they're not my truth. They're blessings from trusting the truth that I've been given through Jesus. And I need to realize that a storm will come. And my foundation will only be proven in that storm. So if today we are worried or we're working hard, it probably may mean that we're not fully confident in our foundation. And you know what you have to do to to build a bedrock foundation? Sometimes tear down the things that you built on your own, whether good or bad. What I love about God is he likes to tear down those bad things. Those walls we've built up, those labels that we've built up in our life, God's like, yo, I can't wait to take the wrecking ball of this stuff and tell you who you really are. But sometimes God needs to say, hey, you've been building all this stuff, and it's empty. You build it without me. And it looks great, but I know when the storm comes, and when it comes to being eternity-minded, it doesn't mean anything. So I may need to knock some of this stuff down. You may need to let go of that relationship or step away from that job or trust me in your giving and, and humility so that I can really build the life that I have for you. The real foundation of our life is only proven in the storm. I say it simply this way. A faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. A faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. And so I know that my faith has been tested, so I know no matter what comes, I can trust it. What did Jesus tell his disciples? He says this, one of my favorite verses, John chapter 16, verse 34, I believe. He says, hey, take heart. In this world, you will have troubles and trials. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. I need you to understand that Jesus is saying to you today, you will have difficult times. Turn to the person next to you, give them a big old elbow, and say, hey, you're going to have some tough times. You're going to have some trouble. Your trouble. No, don't say that, right? Like, like you have trials and troubles. But take heart, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. I believe I have, I have wasted so much time and energy trying to overcome the problem when I really just need to turn my focus to the overcomer and realizing that he's the one that's accomplished everything. He's the one that's just walking through the jungle of life, taking that big old machete and hacking away the vines and branches, and I just follow behind him. I'm, like, I'm glad you're doing the work, Jesus, and I'm glad I get to walk through this. doesn't mean I don't stop walking. Doesn't mean I don't have to sweat and go through that jungle, maybe get bit by a couple bugs. But I keep going because Jesus is paving a way for me. And I know that my foundation will be proven because it's on him, not on me. I'm glad, man, because my emotions change at the drop of a hat sometimes. I'm glad I lean on someone who is under, unchanging and scripture promises me that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Still with me? All good? All right, number three, number three. Healthy foundations require a plan and instructions. I thought about this as we lean into these things about healthy foundations. Sometimes we just got to realize, hey, I'm not straying away from the plan of God. I'm not straying away from these instructions. I was reading a story a while ago about a skyscraper that was built in New York, if you want to throw it up on the screen. So this is a big skyscraper that was built, and you can see that it has kind of weird, of a weird foundation, that T-bar right there. Well, if you look down in the corner to the left, you'll see a building. And that building is a church. And this church told this big Wealthy company over and over again, hey, we're not selling. We're not moving. So if you want to build, you're going to have to build around us. If you want to do something here, you're not tearing us down. You're going to have to build around our building. And so those builders figured out a way. I mean, I'm not getting in that skyscraper because that doesn't look safe. But I love the fact that that church is still there. Some of us need to realize that, hey, you can try and build around my life. You and try can build around me. You can try and build on top of me. But I am not moving. I am staying planted in the plans of God. I am staying committed to the instructions that he's giving me. Come what may, I will not turn on the bedrock faith I have in the teachings of Jesus. 
And you may offer me the world. You may offer me money to try and sell my life and sell what I'm building. But I'm not moving. Healthy foundations require plan and instructions. Let's have a little fun before we close, all right? So you saw this box. Maybe you saw it up here. I'm a giant Lego fan, if you didn't know that. Uh, my son is a big Lego fan now and a big Star Wars fan too. So if I had an excuse to buy a Star Wars Lego, you know I'm going to take it, right? And so if you do, maybe you do puzzles, you know? But I like Legos because you can play with the puzzle, right? That's what I like about it. And so for me, uh, you look at this and it's, it's a, got a beautiful picture of what it takes to build this thing, right? But if you've ever played with a Lego before and I have a six-year-old who loves them as much as he wants to, you don't open the box and it come out looking like this. This particular one was six different bags, 600 pieces. If I look a little tired in the eyes today, it's because it took way longer than I thought last night to build this thing. But I was excited because I got to accomplish it. But guess what? It didn't come out of the box looking this way. So the first thing I did was I opened the box and I, and I, I uh, opened all the bags of all the pieces. And the first thing I did was I grabbed this, the plan, the instructions. I feel like so many times in my life I've poured out all the pieces of my relationships and my things and my goals and my dreams. And I have just tried to figure out it on my own hoping that somehow it would look like the picture on the box or the picture in scripture of my life where Jesus says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I have plans for you that are bigger than you could possibly imagine. I'm like, I don't see it because I'm trying to put these pieces together. I don't know where this goes. I don't know what that's for because I've refused just to pick the instructions up. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's step one? Oh, okay. Oh, there's that piece. What's step two? This particular instruction book has like 180 steps. And I just stayed committed to it, step after step after step. And last night, I was able to pick up my creation. And I'm like, oh, man, it's going on the shelf in the office. When people come in and say, what's that? I say, hey, man, I'm a 36-year-old, 6-year-old, right? <gasps> like, I still love to have fun. But how many of you know, as I said, it didn't come out of the box looking this way. This would have never happened by accident. This never would have happened if I tried to create it on my own. Someone had a vision for this. Someone had an idea. And they got all the pieces needed. And they gave me the plan. They gave me the instruction. And all I have to do is follow it. And it took some time. But man, I put that thing together and I was like, first and foremost, I gotta hide this. Because my boys will destroy it like that. But I want you to know that God has given you the picture on the box. He's given you all the pieces. He's given you the instructions. Am I going to follow them? Or am I going to try and do it on my own? Healthy foundations require a plan and instructions. And the last thing is this, is that trusting and obeying Jesus leads to steady and unshaken in any storm. It's not just believing in Jesus. It's not just even believing him. It's taking a step further and saying, you know what? I am trusting in Jesus. I sought the Lord and he answered. I trust in him. And then I'm obeying him. It doesn't matter if I trust in how good these Lego instructions are. I got to obey them. My question today is, and this is not from a posture of legalism or have tos, where are you not obeying Jesus? Where are you not obeying the things that he's asked you to do? Is it making church a priority? Is it getting rid of that addiction or that temptation? Is it getting rid of that relationship or getting out of your workplace? Is it starting to give? It's like we talked about generosity. Is it starting to use your talents and gift things that God has given you to bless and build his house? Where are we not obeying? Because what does trusting and obeying lead to steady and unshaken in any storm? I want you to be steady and unshaken. Steady sounds boring, but I know it's going to help. It leads to being unshaken. What are the instructions that you're on? you got the pieces in your hands. Where do you need to trust Jesus? Is it with your family, with your marriage? Have you been going to counseling and figuring all these stuff out, but you just, maybe I should just give it to God and trust him. My question for you, if you ever ask, where am I not obeying God? What is the thing you're worried the most about right now? That could be an area where we're not finding obedience. Where is the area you're working the hardest right now? That may be an area that we haven't given to God. Because here's what I want for you. I know this was heavy, but as we close today, we're going to sing in just a moment. Here's what it says in Psalm chapter 1. 
It says they delight in the law of the Lord, the instruction, the plan. On a day and night, they meditate on it. And they are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. I, I stand up here telling you today, it's exciting to follow the instructions of God. It's exciting to surrender my life to the truth of Jesus. It is not boring. It is not burdensome. It is the most freeing thing that you can do with your life because I know, I know the truth and that truth has set me free from addictions and brokenness and depression and fear and anxiety and it just took following the instructions one step at the time. When Jesus says, hey, be in my house, I'm in his house. When Jesus says give, I give. When Jesus says pray for someone, I pray for someone. My perfect no, no. But I know how to follow instructions. And today, God can do that in your life. And your story can become his story. And you can prosper in all you do. If that helps you today, would you give Jesus a big round of praise and thankfulness? And let's stand to our feet. And before, before we sing, before we sing, I want you to close your eyes with me.